last night I made a post to my website blog asking people for like what they wanted in a refill like I was confused I think I mentioned it in yesterday's video I was confused over whether people wanted the Pilot G2 refill or the Parker style G2 refill do you mean this style the first one I showed you that comes out the Pilot G2 pen or do you mean the G2 that's like also known as a Parker style refill. There was over a hundred comments overnight. That's like in six hours or seven hours or whatever it was. Unbelievable, great feedback. And so I think I figured it out. It's the Parker style G2 that 80% of people want. There is people who want the Pilot G2, but they're in the minority. So I'm going to town now because I need to buy, here's the thing, even though a Parker style G2 is a, a standard, they say it's a standard, I've learned not to trust that. So what I'm gonna do is buy a selection of these Parker style G2 refills. Um, in fact, I'll show you what that looks like. So it's this one, this one here. Hopefully this will focus for you. There we go. So that's, that's the refill style there. Now if I can get some better light. There's another version of it. And here's a third version. I can see minor differences on them. Like I'm sort of comparing them and there's like little differences, but I don't think it's enough to make a, to make a difference. So obviously, even though it's an international standard, it's actually an ISO standard. People don't seem to make them to a standard, but you know, I'm not in the refill making business. So I'm going to go to a stationery shop and try and order like every type of other refill like that I can of the Parker style G2 refill so we'll see how that goes just now actually later on I will show you right there something exciting to show you but I'll show you that when I come back from town stop along the workshop because right now I am making where are they car keys or something ah here we go right now over in the the new workshop we're cutting um hankies titanium hankies titanium hankies sorry I'm kind of tired today I've been up at like 5 a.m for the last five nights in a row just can't seem to sleep anyway that is the hanky that's a gold version I usually I don't I stopped selling that one at least temporarily and so that's the so this so this is what sort of you dangle your keys on and have it hanging on the edge of your pocket so it doesn't make a hole in your pocket or scratch your phone works really well carry it every day so we're cutting ordinary hang keys and it's been a while I only did I think I only ever did one run of them maybe two but I cut hang keys out of Mokutai or Timascus. It's a, in case you're not familiar, it's a it's a very special type of titanium. It's like a layered titanium, so it looks it looks just like this. It looks like ordinary titanium, but see if I can get the light right for you. You have a look at this. You see that pattern in there, like a fingerprint pattern. So we can get a bit better. There we go, you see that? So that fingerprint pattern, um, when you when you heat it with a blowtorch, you sort of heat it sort of carefully and, and bring the heat up, it will it gives like a sort of a two-tone effect. And in fact, I'll insert a picture right here. So that's what the hanky looks like in, in Mokotai. Now I have got this little end bit here that I can use, I have this little chunk I can use, I have this big strip I can use, and got this one which is too thick, it's way 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 too thick, Oops. and I've got this little bit here that's too thin. Now, 
Mogatai is 20 times more expensive than ordinary titanium. Yes, 20 times. So, so you look at this piece here, I can't remember what this costs, it's, it's something like a thousand? Fifteen hundred dollars, something like that. It really is like that's this this bit here is like I don't know five hundred or seven hundred dollars worth or four hundred. I don't know. I can't remember. It's yeah, it's not cheap. So the plan is to I think it'll be worthwhile is to make a, another another run of these. But you know they cost so much more to produce. You know for for various reasons. The material alone. They've got to be machined, you know, a bit more carefully in a different way. Um, if you make a mistake on one, then, you know, you've, you've made a big mistake. And so you kind of have to factor in the price of the others by writing off that one. So kind of like if you screw some up, then, you know, that cost has got to be held up by the pricing of the other ones. I mean, you know, there's, there's hardly any screw ups, but it does happen. And, you know, you've got to be very careful. You've got to spend the time and effort blow torching it. You know, it takes it takes time, it takes effort. You screw them up, they have a, like a little blemish on them. You've got to start the process again. You've got to sort of retumble again and then blow torch them again. It's very, so, you know, and that happens to quite a high percentage because I've got like a, like it has to be flawless before I let it out. So, you know, quite often I have a very, very high kind of double, di double digit percentage of uh, Mokutai hankies where I blowtorch them, there's a slight blemish, I have to redo them again and then out of those that I redo, I've got to redo another high percentage. So that fact that, you know, the cost comes into that as well. But I've been asked and asked and asked and asked again and again for them and I'm just like, okay, you know, maybe, maybe it's time to do them. So, yeah. Back from town now, managed to get one, one Parker style refill. That one here. That means I've got one, two, three, four different Parker style refills. Parker style G2 style refills. Now, I'll put these back otherwise I'll lose them. I managed to find online one two, three, somewhere between four, five, six other manufacturers of them. A guy was selling, was selling them uh, online uh, on TradeMe, which is the New Zealand equivalent of eBay. We don't have eBay here, we have TradeMe. So I got those, so that's at least eight different types, which I think's enough. I can't remember if I explained it, but the reason for the different, uh, you know, buying them from different manufacturers is even though apparently it's an ISO standard and you know they should be standard. From experience, these 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 things can can vary. You know, like I've uh, I've had Mont Blanc refills, which is made by the same company, and I've had the mo a single you know type of Mont Blanc refill be different, like a tiny variation. So you you can't trust the sort of standard really, um, I find that anyway. So I'm just apprehensive of, you know, like saying, hey, it can take this, 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 this type of refill and it not actually do it. So I like to test it, make sure it can take it. And you know, my confidence level is here. So when I sell stuff on Kickstarter, you know, really pitch it because I do, I typically pitch hard because I really, really believe in my own stuff. And you know, which is why I give a lifetime guarantee and etc., etc., etc. So, yes, it, it helps my confidence level and therefore should help your confidence level. So I've just spent the last ages on that computer there. I have been replying to YouTube comments. It's kind of awesome, kind of exciting. As you may know, I have been doing YouTube videos for Whatever, you know, 280 plus days in a row is, what, eight, nine months, 280 days? 280 days, 280 something days without missing a day. A daily video, every day. That's what a daily video is. Anyway. And the channel has sort of gone from, you know, it's been a slow, steady climb from zero subscribers to maybe 
seven, you know, 800 subscribers, 900 subscribers. And in the last week to two weeks, it's just gone pew, and I'm almost up to 1200. Like in the last three days, I've gained like 200 subscribers. And I think it's because I'm doing spinner videos. People are really interested in them, in spinners. There's not much information out there. And so I'm, I'm making these videos, kind of giving a bit of, you know, more spinner content and less, you know, this is my workshop, this is my titanium stuff type content. So, you know, it makes sense that I'm doing that. You know, I've been trying to grow the channel. I've been, you know, I've invested hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours um, of my time and, and energy into into sort of building my YouTube channel and just, you know, gaining a little bit of traction just now, which is, you know, it's damn exciting if I'm honest. So, yeah, that's where, that's where this smile is coming from today. You should find this exciting. While I drag them along the kitchen table and scratch the hell out of my table, it's fine. So, what these are, I'll get rid of the top layer actually. Um, give me a second, actually. There's two things to show you. The first are these. So these are 45 millimeter diameter, which is something, one and a quarter inch, one and, no, sorry, one and three quarter inch, perhaps, some of that diameter lids for pill pots, the titanium sort of containers that I do. These are raw and untumbled, but fully finished in all other regards. So these lids are fairly simple, just simple flat lids. Now I have the other lids, which truthfully excite me a lot more, and these are them. Again, 45 millimeters diameter, same as the other ones. The inside, pretty much the same. The outside, however, pretty different. Quite a fancy semi-tough thing to machine now I'll be honest it is not cheap to produce those those sort of looped lids I call them looped lids they you know they're one of one two three like maybe eight or nine or ten or twelve different components I make for the sort of pill pots you know I make a short base a long base a flat lid the loop lid uh, extension pots with no ba no base in them, so they're sort of bottomless, and then a set set of extension pots that you know have bottoms in them. And by far, those are the most expensive to produce. They just they just require so much um, machining after the the initial lathe work that's done. But anyway, those are for the Kickstarter project that I will be fulfilling. So those are the first lids to come off the line. I've got you know I don't know how many more pieces to go one or two thousand pieces it's uh it's not a big project only a hundred and something backers but so many of the backers ordered like the full vip reward that has like an absolute ton of pieces in it so yeah it'll be a, it'll be an interesting fulfillment i think this is the first day where i've really not said much about the spinner. I've been looking a lot at spinners, I've been playing a lot with some other spinners and you know playing quite a bit with this, sort of thinking about it and, and that kind of thing. I don't really have much to say, you know like uh, almost certainly tomorrow I will have something. I'm having another prototype blank cut today, I think I might have mentioned that, so I might be going to the workshop tomorrow, I'll see to to, to sort of to, to do what could be the final sort of handmade prototype. But yeah, really, really not much to add in terms of the spinner today. Um, I'll just show you it spinning a bit, maybe. I think it looks better when I have it uh, uh, in the dark a little bit. Let's get it over here. Right, 
With that, I will leave you with a quote. It's by one of my favorite people to quote, Marcus Aurelius, and he said, he that lives in harmony with himself lives in harmony with the universe.